Welcome back to the Underwater Filming Tips series. It's good to be back. I went to Egypt for more or less whole of May and I filmed a lot of footage for this Underwater Filming Tips series. That's why we didn't upload any tutorials during that time. Now it's a fresh start and we're getting back to it. And as Florian would say, this trip was amazing. And if you haven't watched the Red Sea video yet, go and check it out, it's super cool. And now let's get started with the highly requested episode. Underwater white balance. And why you need an underwater white balance. And we won't be talking about red filters or ambient filters for your video lights in this episode, that's gonna be one of the next episodes. Here are a few tips on how to set the white balance underwater. So let's dive right into it. So to start with, color temperature in general is measured in Kelvin. And the main color temperatures that are used in the filmmaking industry are tungsten light and daylight. This is really important if you're filming above water. But it won't harm you to know these basics also for underwater. Tungsten light is a very warm light and has around 3500 Kelvin. It's the lights that you see in the background. That's sort of the warm color temperature. And daylight is a very cool light. It's around 5000 to 6000 Kelvin. That's a more cooler color temperature. The light that I'm using here to brighten up myself is daylight and the light coming through the windows is daylight as well. The lights in the back are just background lights. It's just to, to make the scene look nicer. And the Kelvin scale goes from about 1000 to 12000. It can even go beyond 12,000. So 1,000 being a very, very warm color temperature and 12,000 is gonna be a very, very cold color temperature. So why do you need to do a white balance? White balancing underwater is as important as breathing underwater. If you don't breathe, you will die. And if you don't do a white balance, well, your footage is gonna die. Okay, maybe it won't be as drastic as that, but you're gonna run into some major issues during the color correction process. You won't be able to restore or fix the colors that you've lost. You can have a perfectly exposed image, but if you messed up the white balance, well, you're screwed and your colors are ruined. What the white balance does, it, it tells your camera what objects are actually white. So for example, if you have a warm light hitting a white wall, the white wall is gonna be displayed in a warm color temperature. So to make that wall actually look white, you have to do a manual white balance and tell the camera that the wall is actually white. That's just a rough explanation on what white balance does. And as divers, there is an issue with color and light underwater. So if you are a diver, then you know that colors disappear with every meter you go down. And water is like 800 times denser than air, so it's gonna suck up light and color like a black hole. So actually water is the underwater videographer's worst nightmare when it comes to colors. So the best thing would be just to empty the ocean and then you won't have any problems with colors underwater. Okay, joking aside, in the first three to five meters, the red colors disappear. And then after around 10 meters, the orange colors start to disappear. And then when you hit the 30 meters mark, the yellow colors disappear. And then after 40 meters, the green color is gonna disappear. I don't have a green fruit, so. And then beyond that, the blue is gonna be your only companion until the light completely disappears. The deeper you go, the more colors you're gonna lose. And using a proper white balance is gonna help you to a certain extent to preserve or display the few colors that are left correctly. And a proper white balance is also gonna help you to get rid of that bluish greenish tint that you will get if you don't do a manual white balance underwater. And there are other ways to improve the quality of your image, to improve the quality of your colors, to bring back colors to your scene. But we're gonna be talking about red filters and video lights in upcoming episodes. And in this episode, we're assuming you're just starting out with underwater videography and you don't have a red filter yet. A manual white balance is gonna instantly help you get better shots. 
When you have your camera set to automatic white balance underwater and you look at your screen and you think, oh, the colors look pretty good. But in fact, those colors are not there. So when you go to the computer and you look at your footage later on, that fish is not gonna be yellow, it's gonna be blue or green because your camera didn't do a proper white balance and you didn't tell the camera what is white. So don't trust the screen of your camera. And talking about automatic white balance, just forget your camera has this option. Just forget it. Remember that time the camera had automatic white? No, your camera does not have an automatic white balance. It's not a function on your camera anymore. From this day on, from this episode on, it is not a function that you're ever gonna use again, either above water or underwater. And also you don't wanna have the camera changing the white balance during a shot. So for example, if you have a cloudy day and then the sun comes out, then the color temperature changes because you have an overcast light and then you have a daylight. So you have the cooler and the warmer. And the automatic white balance is gonna to try to adapt to those two light conditions, to the color temperatures. So you're gonna have a color shift during your recording and you really want to avoid that as well. Automatic white balance, pew, gone. Nailing the white balance with compressed file formats is so important. It's like white balancing with a stills shot. So if you are shooting in JPEG and you mess up your white balance, then you're not gonna be able to change the white balance a whole lot after in post-production. If you're shooting raw, then you can change the white balance afterwards without having any quality loss. That's one of the benefits if you're shooting in raw. Especially in photography, I would always recommend to shoot in raw. And with video, it's the same thing. If you're filming in a file format like H.264 or any compressed file format, then it's gonna be really hard to adjust your white balance in color correction. You can tweak it a bit, but you can't push it too much. When you didn't record the colors, the colors are not in the scene, so you're not gonna be able to bring them back. But if you're recording with a camera that can capture raw video, then you're gonna be able to change the white balance later on in post-processing. The only issue with cameras that capture raw file format is they're very expensive. But it's good for you to know anyway that there are cameras out there that can capture raw video. So now the big question, how do you set the manual white balance? First off, you need a white balance card. We're gonna to get to that in a second. You're gonna to have to set your manual white balance more or less every one to two meters you change your depth. So if you're going one or two meters deeper, you have to reset your white balance. If you go one to two meters up again, you're gonna to have to reset that white balance. So as soon as you change your depth at any time, you have to reset it. And this really has to become a habit and you don't have to think about it anymore. Usually you have a dedicated button for white balance on your camera, it's written WB on it, and most underwater housing manufacturers have a dedicated lever or button for this because this is a function that you're gonna be using a lot underwater. Once you're in the white balance menu, you scroll through to the manual white balance option, and then usually a little box appears on the back of your screen. You want to fill that little box, or best, you want to fill the whole screen with a white balancing card. If you cannot fill the whole frame, well, zoom into it or move the camera a bit closer to the white balancing card. If you don't fill up that little section, then your camera may use the scene around it and it's gonna mess up your white balance. And once you fill that screen, you hit the shutter release button and then your manual white balance is locked. So coming back to the white balancing cards, you can get white cards or gray cards, and if you do, try to get big ones. Get ones like those. You wanna be able to fill the frame completely. So if you're using smaller ones, like those, it's gonna be really hard for you to fill that frame. Imagine you have to fill that whole frame. That's a lot easier if you just use big ones. And if those are too big, you can still cut those in half. And also an important thing to know, when you're using small ones like those, you're gonna have to bring them really close to your camera to fill the frame. You have to take into account that water is gonna absorb the colors. 
the closer you get to the camera, the more colors you will have. So if you do a white balance, it will be accurate at that distance. But if you're filming an object that is further away, then you're not gonna get accurate colors because the white balance is gonna be wrong. So if you use the bigger ones, you can do the white balance more or less at a distance where your subject is. Best would be to do the white balance where your subject is and then you get accurate colors. But try not to do white balance further away than one meter or one and a half meters because after about one and a half to two meters, the colors disappear anyway. If you're filming anything that is really far away, it's gonna be bluish. It doesn't matter how you set your white balance, just because of the density of the water. So the best colors you're gonna get from the camera to about one or two meters. So that's a little side tip. If you wanna get really good colors, go as close as you can to your subject. And if you're using a white, white balancing card, try to be one stop underexposed. We talked about exposure in the previous episodes. If you're overexposed and your colors may be blown out and your camera won't know what is actually overexposed and shown as white and what is actually white. And then the camera won't have enough information to set the proper white balance. Or maybe it would just say the scene is too bright. So the rule that I would usually follow is I would underexpose when I use a white white balancing card. So the simpler way is just to use a gray card and then you avoid all of that fuss. And with gray cards, you won't have the issue that you're accidentally overexposing the image. So you don't have to bring down your exposure to do a manual white balance. You can simply use the settings that you have and it'll go a lot faster. You will see if gray is not gray and if it's overexposed and it turns white, you know that you're overexposing your image and the white balance won't be correct. But you won't see if white is too bright because white is already white, if, if you get what I mean. If you don't have a white balancing card, then you can obviously use your dive slate. It won't be as good as a proper white balancing card, of course, but it will be better than an automatic white balance for sure. And in some cases you can use the sand beneath you if it's white sand. The only issue that you might have when you're doing a white balance on sand is if it has too much red color in it, then the white balance may be off a little. But that you're gonna have to try out. It really depends on the sand. And also don't do a manual white balance on sand that is 20 meters below you because then the colors are gonna to be totally off when you're filming a meter in front of you. So you're gonna to have to do the white balance to the sand at more or less a depth that you're filming your subject. So the white balance has to be in a close range to work properly. And remember that just because the colors are accurate one to two meters in front of you, it doesn't mean that your background is gonna be nice and colorful too. Because the water density is gonna absorb the colors the further away your subject is. So anything beyond two meters is gonna look bluish even if your foreground is properly white balanced. And you can use the manual white balance as a creative tool as well. Like if you're filming at sunset during golden hour. Usually golden hour is gonna give you a warm scene underwater because it's a nice warm light. And if you do a manual white balance to that warm light, your scene is gonna turn bluish, coolish, and the light rays hitting through the water surface are gonna be white. So the color temperature is shifted so that the warm light becomes a cooler light so that white is white. But usually you film during golden hour to capture these nice golden light rays coming through the surface. So in that case, you can set the Kelvin manually. So this is a different way of doing a manual white balance. So you can shift the color temperature, the Kelvin value, to what you want the scene to look like. So you can change it to a cooler or to a warmer look. And the best way to find out how this works is to go diving during sunset and then just play around with the Kelvin values. And then you can see how the color temperature shifts and decide what you like best. We talked about custom function buttons in the previous episodes and the same applies for the white balance. You can set custom white balance presets. So depending on the camera model, you can save up to a certain amount of different white balance presets. And with my camera, with the GH5, I can set up to four manual white balance settings and then I can save up to four manual Kelvin settings. So in total, I will have eight different manual white balance settings. So if you have the same conditions throughout a dive, for example, you have a sunny day, you can save different white balance settings for different depths. But for the beginning, I would recommend you to do the manual white balance every time, just so you get used to that routine. And here's a little quick tip. If you did mess up your white balance, if it's really important that you keep that shot to tell your story, and as we learned in the previous episode, story is key, well then there's one thing you can do. You can change the image to black and white. 
It's not perfect, but if you really need the shot and it's totally messed up, black and white can help you out. So to sum it up, manual white balance has to be as automatic as breathing. It's a pain at the beginning, I know, but it's something you really need to do. So better get used to it as soon as you can. And quite frankly, there's no way around it. If you don't do a manual white balance, you're gonna mess up the shot or your camera will. At the beginning of the video, I thought it was gonna be a quick uh, video on how to do a manual white balance because the procedure is very easy. You just click manual white balance and you do your manual white balance. But there's so much to this topic to get accurate colors and to get proper colors. In the upcoming episodes, we're gonna be talking about red filters. We're gonna be talking about video lights because all of this is related to get perfect shots. I couldn't fit all of this into this video. Otherwise, this video is gonna be three hours long. Anyhow, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and you'll be notified when we upload further episodes. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments section below and we'll get back to you. Safe diving and I will hopefully see you you in the next episode. Hmm, that didn't work. Hmm. Oh, by the way, do you want to see my first ever white balance card? It's paper and it's laminated. I use it once and then I bought the others. No, actually I bought those and then I figured uh, too small. And then I got the big ones. And now Keldon was so kind to, to lend me his. I think this is a prototype. Keldon is going to be bringing out uh, white balance cards, so maybe just wait a bit uh, before you buy any. But the cheap ones, they're like 20 bucks, so you're not going to do anything wrong. And no, this is not a sponsored video. Now the video is coming to an end. I will go now. One more thing. You can also do white balance on the tank of your body. You have to be fairly close. Don't do a white balance on your body that is 10 meters away. But yeah, that's just one more thing. And also it works on white fins if they don't reflect too much. If you have gloves that have white writing, you can hold it in front of the camera as well. And that would work. But at the end, if you really want to have proper colors, then get a proper white balancing card. Now we're done.